Okay, so hopefully you have now completed all of your wiring of landing the leads from the switches and toggles onto your terminal blocks here. I gave you this diagram to help you figure out what wire should land on which terminal blocks and I split it into two videos so that you could get that much done um, before we go on to the next part so it wouldn't be quite as daunting. So hopefully you now have your panel looking something like this. All the wires landed except for the ones from the analog uh, potentiometer. So our next step now is going to be running from our terminal block up to the PLC. So for that we're going to use another wiring diagram. That's this one here and I will post a PDF of it as well. And you can see that down in this corner here that's pretty much just a neater computer version of this, right? We've got our toggle switches, the push buttons, and the LED indicators. Same number of terminal blocks, just kind of in color and a little more neat. So what we're going to add on that we haven't done already are these wires leading the top of the terminal blocks. You can see the ones from the right here are going to land on the output side of our PLC, which makes sense. Those are the ones going to our lamps and then this row across through here is going to all go up to the top of the PLC and you can see they're split into two groups based on whether we're using the inputs in syncing or sourcing fashion. So I think that's fairly self-explanatory. I know you can't read any of the labels on the camera here but you'll be able to on the PDF. Uh, the one thing I'll point out is the color code and I actually don't have it on my printed out version but it's on the PDF version you'll notice that each wire has a brief description of it. So this wire here says BLU, and that stands for blue, and it says T1 up, that's connected to our T1 up position, and then it says forward slash IO2, because it's connected to input 02. So, um, yeah, I think that should make sense. Most of the color code will be pretty intuitive. Um, the only thing that's a little different you may not have seen yet is if you look at the wire right above this blue one it its label is WHT forward slash BLU and that's because it's a two color wire so it's primarily white but then it has what we call a blue tracer line on it so it is white wire with blue on it so if you look you have a piece of this that you got yesterday um, so there you go I will go ahead and start connecting up let us let's I'm not going to make you watch me do every single wire connection, but let's start out with a couple of them and then I'll let you finish them on your own. So let's start out by providing power to the PLC. And if you look down in the bottom left corner here, we have a DC 24 volt plus and a DC 24 volt minus. So if I follow the wires down there, you can see that I am going to take that off of the red block that I already have power on and for the black one I'm coming down to get power off the black. You'll also notice that I'm going to be daisy chaining off of those so I'm also going to come off the terminal 2 and go down to terminal 16 and then I'm going to come off of terminal 16 and come up around to the top terminal 10. Same thing on the red side from terminal 1 I might jump down to terminal 7 and then maybe terminal 1 actually has 3 on it that's also going to go up to terminal one there. So we're going to be putting multiple wires under some of the terminals. So let's start by doing the positive power. So I've already got positive power to this side of the terminal block. So I need to bring that up to terminal one on the bottom, terminal seven on the bottom, and terminal one on the top. Okay, let me grab my wire and we'll do that. And actually, before I start connecting the wires, I wanted to show you the PDF version of the schematic so I could zoom in a little bit and you can see a little more clearly uh, what we're working off of. So again, you'll have a copy of this you can download and have open on your computer while you're wiring. You can see up in the top left, actually let's uh, zoom all the way out so you can see the whole thing. So up in the top left, we have the schematic representation of our power supply. The line neutral and ground are already connected to your power cord, so you don't need to do anything there. But you can see coming off of that, uh, we have our red wire going to the circuit breaker. We did that in the last video. Then we come out of the circuit breaker down to terminal block 2, 
and jumper from terminal block 2 down to terminal block 16. The negative supply from the power comes to terminal block 1 and is also jumpered down to terminal 15. So we'll zoom in a little bit more now. Uh, we've got the PLC up in this corner, all our devices down here, and then right here we have the color code um, just to help you get used to the abbreviations in case any of them didn't make sense. So zooming in a little bit you can see here what I was referring to as to how the wires are labeled. So this wire right here you're going to use blue wire and its function is it's the signal from the toggle switch 1 in the up position and we're connecting it to input 0 2. The next one up that's going to be a white wire with blue tracer on it that's connected to toggle switch 1 in the down position and its input 0 3. And you can see those just continuing across. We have these um, four inputs from the toggle switches connected to inputs 2 through 5. And looking at how it's wired, you can see that I have the positive DC supply connected to the common for that chunk of inputs. So hopefully you're feeling comfortable that that means that the PLC is sourcing. So the switches, if we go look at the toggle switches, they better be syncing. So let's scroll down to the toggle switches. And the common for the toggle switches is tied to brown on block one, which is the negative DC 24. So yep, those are paired up right. The toggle switch is syncing and the card is sourcing. And then looking at the next group of inputs, we have the three push buttons, switch one, switch two, and switch three, connected to inputs eight through 10. They're all using orange wire. The common for those uh, inputs is tied to the negative DC. So if we go and look at the switches, the common of the switches better be tied to the positive DC. So here are the switches and the common side of them is this gray wire. You follow it back up to the terminal blocks and it's landing on terminal block 2 which is the positive DC supply. Okay, and I think that's a good overview of the schematic so let's go ahead and start wiring. Okay, so I said the first one I wanted to connect up was the power for the PLC. So again that's going to be coming from this terminal block here and just running up to the positive DC 24. But then I'm also, while I'm landing that one, I should be thinking that I'm gonna come out of that one and come down to the common right here. And I'm also gonna come out of that one and run all the way around up across to terminal one on the top. And it's important to note that um, while this diagram does have all the physical devices in there, right? It's showing the configuration. It doesn't, the wires are not necessarily shown uh, location as to how they'll be. Like I'm showing this red wire going up around to the left, that makes it cleaner on the schematic than if I had to jump over all these wires and come back over here. But in reality, if you look at it, it's we don't have wire duct on this side over here. So I'm going to come out of DC24 and I'm going to go down to terminal 7, I think it's, yep, it's terminal 7, and then I'm going to come out of that one and go up around to terminal 1. And that's going to do the same function as going from here to here to here. And then while well, it looks like I go like this, really I'm going to go here. And then physically it'll go around the PLC and up to terminal 1. So let's go ahead and do that one. Give a little tug on each one every time you land a wire and I'm good to go there. So now I'm going to come right across and up to here. So I will cut that one off and 
and strip the wire. Again, remember we're trying not to flick the wire pieces towards the PLC or anything. And I'm just stripping this one right now before I even land this one. Twist them together. And you can it's probably a little hard to see, but I've cut them a little long. I can see a little bit of copper right there still. So I'm just going to pull it back out and cut off the very tip of both of them. And here again, I'm now cutting little copper wires that would be bad to get in the PLC. So I carefully dump them off to the side, not anywhere near the PLC. Now let's try that for length. And that's better. And again, remember giving firm pressure down as you rotate so that we don't strip out our terminal block screws. And get that one sitting down nice. And actually I'm going to bring it over one so it's a little straighter. That looks good. And then I'm coming to terminal 7 right here. So same thing again. Cut it, strip it, the one that's going in the terminal and the one that's going to go on around the PLC up to terminal 1 on the input side. So just quick, what I've just done is I've come from terminal 16 up to terminal 1 and then I've jumped from terminal 1 to terminal 7 and now I'm going to go from terminal 7 physically around this way up to terminal 1 on top. Okay, so I've now completed all of the connections for positive DC on the power supply. I've got terminal 1, terminal 7, and terminal 1. And especially as you're learning, it might be useful to you as you make connections to get a highlighter or a, any kind of pen or something and just mark off the wires as you make, the, make them. So I can say, got that wire done, got that wire done, got that wire done, that kind of thing. Okay, so let's continue on with the power. So let's finish um, getting negative supply. So we're going to bring a negative to terminal 2 and then jump it down to terminal 16 and then go around to terminal 10.
Okay, so looking at my diagram, I just came from block 15 up to block 2. Then I went from block 2 to block 16. And then from 16 around to 10. Okay, so I now have power to the PLC. Okay, let's do one of our inputs now. So let's take, um, let's do this first one from block three. I'm going to go up and land on block, terminal block four on the input side of the PLC, and I'm using blue wire. So from terminal block three to terminal block four using blue wire. So I'm just noting that I'm landing on terminal 4, which is input 2. So just keep in mind, to keep track of, am I talking about a terminal number or an input number when you're checking the schematic? So just to clarify what I'm saying, it's landing on terminal, uh, terminal 4 physically, the fourth screw over, and that is labeled input 0, 2. And you'll note I'm not making my wires tight. I'm not like pulling them tight around the corners, but I'm also not making them extra loose. If you put in too much extra wire, your wire ducts will get full with wire kind of bunching up in different locations. So you want to leave yourself enough room that if you need to adjust things from one term, one slot in the wire duct to another, or that kind of thing you can. But um, typically you're not putting in enough extra wire that you could move the wire to some other location on the board. Maybe you could move within the terminal block somewhere, but don't put in a bunch of extra wire or this wire duct will get too full. Okay, so we've done an input now, so I can check off. I've made that connection on that end of that wire, and I've made this connection on this end of that wire. And, I mean, I'm like I said, I'm using the pencil because it's what I have handy here, but I usually find it nicest for me when I'm doing this if I just have a highlighter or something colored that I can, in a quick glance, see which connections I've already made. Okay, so we've done an input. Um, let's do one output then. So let's do this output from terminal block 10. I'm going to bring a red wire up to terminal 13 on the PLC output. That's output 7. So red wire, terminal 10 to terminal 13. And here, um, as I don't have labels on the terminal blocks, I could either count down here, or it's kind of nice that in this case I have a red wire. Again, I have a red wire coming from my LED to terminal block 10. So looking down here, I can just look for the red wire, which is this gray block right here. And then I'm going to terminal 13, labeled output 7 on the PLC.
Okay, now we've done that wire on both ends. Just a reminder, when you're looking at wiring diagrams, pay attention to where if the wire jumps over another wire, that's making it clear that it's not connected. So you can see I had a red wire here that crossed another red wire, but they're different functions, right? So this red wire that's a signal output from the PLC is not the same electrically as the red wires that are positive DC 24 volts all the time. So you can see on the diagram it hops over that wire as opposed to up here where these wires, these all of these red wires are the same function, so they join right there. They don't hop over each other. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking and I'm just gonna finish wiring mine and I encourage you to do the same. Okay, so I'm sorry my camera cut off for some reason halfway through that, but you got to see me wire the first half. So I've now finished wiring all the inputs, all the outputs. I've gone through my diagram and checked to make sure I have all my wires landed correctly. So I think we're good for what we were trying to get wired up today. So our next step will be to connect power to the PLC and download a basic program to test our I.O. Good job. Okay, so if you've completed your wiring, please go through and recheck everything that you've done to make sure that your connections match the schematic. We're about to get to the point where if you had wired something wrong, you could fry an output of your PLC, uh, fry an input, hurt the power supply, etc. So this is a good time to go through and make sure everything is matching your schematic. Uh, kind of the key, I key things are checking your power connections. Make sure there's no power that doesn't go through the circuit breaker. So if you look here, the only wire that's not protected by the circuit breaker is this red wire coming off of this terminal, running around, and landing on the top of the circuit breaker. So some you might be tempted to use this second terminal here on the power supply to go straight down to the terminal blocks or to power the power supply, but we don't want to do that because then it would not be protected by the circuit breaker. So verify all your connections are good, and then uh, make sure your circuit breaker is in the down position tripped position and then I'm going to go ahead and plug in my power cord and as I did that you can see that the green LED turned on and that's a good sign that I have power now I'm going to flip up my circuit breaker and you can see I now have a power LED on the processor it's going through its startup sequence um, and I am going to it actually doesn't matter if I'm in run or program mode or remote right now because there's no program in it. But I can check to see if I got my inputs wired correctly. If I hit input 1, uh, my push button 1, switch 1, we've said that switch 1 is supposed to be input 8. So if I hit input, uh, input 1, push button, that LED on input 8 should turn on. And hopefully you can see it on the camera, it is. So there's the red push button. There's the green push button, and there's the orange push button. So those all work. Let's try our toggle switch one up. 
that's terminal 2. Toggle switch 1 down, that's input 3. Toggle switch 2 up, input 4. Toggle switch 2 down, that's input 5. Okay, so that's good for, I can check my inputs without a program in it. Output-wise, I have to be connected to it um, with the computer for that to work. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my USB cord, and I'm going to have it in remote mode on my switch there. So plug in my USB, and now I'm going to switch over to my computer screen. start up Connected Components Workbench and I'm going to go to Discover and see if it sees that PLC out there. And it's not seeing the USB driver yet. There it is. Okay. And so you can do the same thing here. Um, we're not, you know, so I didn't start from a new program. I just went to discover and you can see here it's saying there's no program in mine. Yours may or may not have a program in it from students last year. So this one was a brand new processor so it doesn't have anything in it and that's saying just let me know that there's no logic in there and that's fine. Uh, for what we're doing right now like I said we don't need to have um, any logic in it. So I'll say OK and then I'm going to go look at my I.O. right now. And this is a way I can check again. So if I hit the red push button Oh, I'm not online, sorry. Let's connect. Okay, now I'll look at my global variables. You can see variables are changing down here, my cycle count, etc. So let's look if I hit um, my red push button, you can see input 8 is changing status. Let's try the green one, input 9, and input 10. Okay, all my push buttons are updating in there. Here's the toggle switches, 2, three, four, and five. Okay, let's see if it will let me force my outputs at all. So my outputs are, we're connected to output seven, eight, and nine. So let's get my inputs back on. to set up differently for it to let me force them it looks like so um, that's fine I'm going to disconnect and just put in a very basic program to test those so let's say I want to turn on the red push button when I uh, turn on the red lamp when I press the red push button so looking at our IO diagram red push button is switch one that's input eight and red lamp that's indicator one is output seven
Do the same thing for the orange and green as well. So switch two is input nine. Lamp two is output eight. And so then I'm going to say input ten. And output nine. Okay, let's download that to the PLC. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm in run mode. And let's watch what happens if I hit the red push button, red lamps turning on, green push button, green lamps turning on, and orange and orange. So looks like all the wiring turned out good. So go ahead and do this same, uh, create the same basic test program for yours and take a screenshot of it um, with a, actually you don't need to take a screenshot of your program, just take a digital photo of you holding down the three buttons with the three lamps on like that and upload that. I don't actually need to see your program file and we'll call that good for this assignment. So your uploads, um, well you'll see them described in the um, instruction description but it's photos of your input and outputs and then a photo of this right here. Push buttons pressed with lights on. Great job. I hope you're happy to have your PLC working now.